we have got something fun. You guys get to watch me learn a game. So you've heard on the podcast me talk about Carnivale uh, from TT Combat. I had Lewis on uh, Tabletop Talk episode 98. And uh, my good buddy Donald has uh, made a huge mistake and said he was going to teach me how to uh, play this. So we're on Tabletop Simulator, and uh, we're going to walk through it. So, uh, Donald, let's, um, what, do we, what does everybody need to know before we get started? Okay, so overall Tabletop Simulator is actually pretty easy, but there's a few things that you need to know. Uh, the first thing, I want to double check to make sure you have the line tool set correctly. Okay. Um, so if you'll, over in the left-hand toolbar, the fourth one down says line. Yep. If you click on that and make sure it says inch. It does. 3D. Yep. Uh, no, auto. it's got 2D. Hold on, let me change that okay, to 3D. Okay, that to 3D. 3D, auto. Auto. Uh, change it to edge. Got it. And then the no log. Got it. So what that does is the first one, um, Carnival uses inches as standard measurement. Um, it does use three-dimensional measurement as opposed to other games. I think Malifaux actually uses 2D still where everything's considered horizontal. The auto is actually a neat feature that they added where as we move our miniatures, they will automatically uh, measure the distances so you don't have to use the line tool to figure out where you're going. Nice. And then edge is just, it picks closest edge to closest edge, standard for wargaming um, setup. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention about Tabletop Simulator is uh, camera movements. If you use your right mouse, you can actually tilt the table yep. so you can see it better. If you click the left mouse, or click the center button, it allows you to move the table. And then the mouse button itself scroll wheel will allow you to zoom in and out got it um so that will be something that comes in handy especially so that you can see that this building in the direct center there is actually a walkway that you can get it to creatures that may or may not be in the in the water um so that's the basics of tabletop simulator that we're going to need to know um so getting into Carnivale. For those who don't know, Carnivale is set in an alternate um, version of Venice. Uh, many of your listeners may understand this concept, but there was a rent that opened in the sky, which brought magic back into the world of Venice. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was just I was on another podcast discussing Malifaux and um, Carnivale, and I'm like, so you're going to hear a theme in the type of games I like to play. <laughs> so that is why um, you'll see that the monsters that i have um most of my about half of mine are actually creatures that are from the other side of the rent um which actually leads me to one other thing about tabletop simulator any of the assets if while you're moused over it if you hold the alt key it'll actually bring up a um, larger version of it right to make it easier to see um and so Let's go ahead and get started kind of some of the mechanics. Yeah, give me one second. The... So uh, Doug came up on the chat, uh, a different okay. Doug, and uh, he said he wishes there was something like this for Malifaux. And just so you know, Doug, uh, there has been attempts at this before, and I also know that Dead Aussie Gamer is in the process. Um, he showed me kind of a work in progress for using Tabletop Simulator with Malifaux. Um, but I agree with you. I like the 3D aspect of it versus a, a Vassal. Um, yeah. So I'm, I agree with you, Doug. Uh, go it, ahead, it, and I will say, Doug, it... It may take him a little while. Um, I was just talking to Craig before this. I've got over 70 hours worth of just tabletop simulator, not including generating assets of getting all this set up. There's actually three mods out there. There's this one, which is for demos, and then two others. One that has a pre-done map at the full scale, which is a 3x3. Three three. And then there's another one that has just tiles and all the assets that you can build your own maps. So that being said, if you will mouse over the card that's the farthest away from your dice, Got I don't it. know if you can see my finger, and do an alt, yeah. then we'll kind of go over what you're looking at. So this is Capitacina. It's one of the leader characters. It's the only leader that's actually on the board. Okay. Uh, um, you know what? My head. Hold on. My head's blocking it. Give me a second. There we go. People can, oh, Now your head's blocking it. Damn it. There we go. Nobody ever can see it. All right. Okay. So the I've got this model. Top you sent me this model. Um, so the top row there is your points. Uh, the first one is your action points. Uh, this does use an action point system. Pretty much, with the exception of four things, 
all of the actions that we're going to be talking about are your single action point. And then I'll go through exactly those four things and how many action points they are. Those do sh um, regenerate the beginning of each turn. So each turn you get, this character gets three action points, your other characters get two. The second one, life, is hit points, pretty standard. The third one, willpower, is a number of points that you can use to spend uh, one for one to add additional dice to a single roll. You can spend up to two. Um, this is a dice pool based mechanic and we'll get into that moment. Command points are kind of the equivalent of soul stones and that only certain characters get access to them. And they have several things we're going to do you, that you can use them for, but there's only going to be one that we'll be doing because it's on the card. Otherwise, we're just going to assume nobody has command points. And then once we get done, I can kind of go over the. There's one big piece that I'm intentionally leaving out by saying, by saying what I did. Gotcha. Last two things: size is base size, and then ducats is the number of points that it costs. To book a game is a hundred ducats. Cool. Um, so those last three, life, will, and command, do not regenerate normally. Right. Therefore, once you use them, they're gone. Makes sense. Um, under that, you have your attributes. Move is how many inches you can move a turn, uh, or per action, excuse me. Okay. Um, and then the other three are your stats, dex, attack, protection, and mind. And those are how many dice you roll. So as I mentioned, Carnivali is a... Um, dice pool game, so let's say you have a dexterity of six, you always roll one die that's a different color. That's called your destiny die. Right. Then you'll notice that there are two gray ones in your bowl. So I would roll that one destiny die plus five additional black. Six. And what you are looking for... Go ahead. Yeah. So what you are looking for on these is, a, with the exception of two cases, one of which we won't be doing, that's when you cast spells, you're looking for a seven or above. So seven through 10. Out of a D8. Out of a D10. D10, okay, gotcha. These are D10s. So each seven or above, one. so in this case I have two, is called an ace. A success is one or more aces. Okay. A failure is no aces. Right. Now, where the destiny die comes into play is if you roll a 10 on the destiny die and an additional ace, so one other die has to be a 7 or better, then it's called it's a critical, and you get a bonus effect. If you roll a 1 and no aces at all, it's then it's a fumble. Same thing, negative effect. Got it. Now, remember, the destiny die is a die. So when you roll that 10 for the critical, it also counts as an ace because it's seven or above. Got it. So and that's part of, if my stat was five, do I get five plus a destiny die or do I get no. four plus a destiny? Four plus a destiny die. Got it. So it's one so of the my destiny... stats. Exactly. Got it. So Glenn Tussie's back in the bowl. Like I said, that's, you know, and we'll kind of go through when you use which ones. Yep. Um, Right below that, you have your weapons. Now, in Carnivale, there's no traditional ranged versus melee. Okay. So, like, you'll see one of your characters is a fisherman. He has a spear gun, um, and it says range 8. Yep. You are allowed to shoot that while you are in base-to-base -base combat. So that is the big thing in Carnivale is you are either in base-to-base -base or you're not in base-to-base. -base. Your weapon is within range or it's not within range. Okay. Now, every model does have... And a weapon attack called unarmed that's not on the cards. If we need to get to that, I can walk you through it. It's pretty easy. All right. um, and I'll explain in a little bit exactly why you have the unarmed. So the way the chart works, weapon, just the type of weapon. A uh, range is how far you have. You know, your range, zero inches, means that you have to be within um, base to base. Right. So evasion. Attacking is the second place where I talked about that you don't use a seven or better. You, for attacking, you use your opponent's dexterity plus the evasion score if you have one. Okay. So in this situation, if I was attacking your Cappadocia with these twin blades, I would have to roll a six or better on a d10. All right. So if I've got, so my, my fisherman's got a dexterity of four. And let's say that you're, let's say I'm attacking another fisherman. And I needed right. to use the pole spear. The pole spear has no evasion. 
So it's just, I would just have to roll a four about her? Correct. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Now, if you were shooting with the harpoon gun because it has a minus one, then you'd need a three or better. Got it. Now, you'll see it says or in a normal game. You pick before the game starts which one of the two weapons for the demo. I'm not going to worry about that. So, um, so sometimes you'll see multiple weapons together, meaning you have all of them. Sometimes you'll see the or. Got then, it. Um, damage, when you roll that attack, then you get one point of damage per ace you roll. Okay. Plus any additional damage that your um, yep. weapon does. So in this case, with the pulse bullet or the harpoon gun, since we're talking with the fisherman, you get an additional point of damage plus the aces. Got it. Um, if you roll critical, you get one life point loss plus the damage. Hmm. And so, which leads us into penetration. Um, in combat, you roll your against my dex, your attack against my dex. Once you've determined the amount of damage you do, I then roll my protection plus your penetration value. Got it. And then every success subtracts from that, and then that gets converted into life point loss. Right. That is why the critical is, says one life point loss, because that one cannot be reduced by a protection roll. Got it. Um, mind. Mind is used for things such as fear or for casting spells. So for this demo won't really be using that that much okay. um keywords are just your typical keywords you know that's pretty standard across the board um you can see faction leader human um and then you have your character abilities now anytime you see the word expert you always see a number at the end for example expert offense expert means you get to re-roll that many dice um after you do your initial roll Okay. So you roll your attack, then you have expert offense two if you're in base-to-base -base combat. Offense is, is base-to-base, -base, marksman is not. You get to re-roll two of the dice. Now, the only rules on that is you can never re-roll the destiny die unless okay. the rules... And then you can never re-roll a re-roll. Right. So if we were in a situation where you get to roll and then I can force you to re-roll dice, I can't force you to re-roll the dice you re that you re-rolled. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, you see acrobatics up there. Acrobatics is basically expert movement. There's some forms of movement that allow that you have to roll dice for. Acrobatics allows you to re-roll. Okay. Uh, on this particular character, infiltration means that you can start greater than three inches above. So normally you'd have to start on one of the tiles, uh, one of the base tiles. But with infiltration, this character can start on a rooftop if he wishes. Pickpocket is if you disengage, which means you're in base-to-base -base combat, or in base-to-base, -base, and you leave that base-to-base -base with an enemy, um, you successfully make your roll, then you gain a willpower point back. Cool. Steal a so coin. So if you run... <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, and actually, if, if we were using objectives, uh, um, then you also get to steal an objective if they're holding it. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, and then the command ability, you, you you spend a command point after one of your actions, and you can use that command ability. A slippery is basically expert disengage. It allows you to reroll dice if you're trying to disengage. Um, and that's the one place where we're going to use the command points. So that's pretty much the stats on a board. Um, just to give you a few things that you may care about. Fast swimmer I'll get to in a moment. Looking at your fisherman. Hunter means that if you're attacking a unit that is a base size larger, so either one of my two were sure monsters, you get an extra die to your attack. Yeah, I think what we can do, Doug, is uh, let, let, let's we can get into the details as we play, right? Okay. So, yeah, sure. so let's 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 do that. Okay. All right. So what's what's step one? Okay, so step one would traditionally be we would each roll a die, whoever rolls highest would um, gets to deploy all of their characters first all right so i am and going I to roll i got a nine eat that okay what'd you get i rolled a two <laughs> so, so i deploy first yes so pretty much any of the back row so you uh -huh. can see these tiles are four inch tiles so any of the back row um 
your gondolier can actually deploy in the gondola if he wishes, uh -huh. and your um, Cappadocia can deploy on top of one of the buildings. Other than that, they have to be on the concrete tiles. All right, so that's a no. Tiles. That's a no-brainer, right? Gondolier, yeah. gondolier row is gonna definitely have to be right. on the gondola. Yeah. I mean, it's in his name, right? Oh, but he's been drinking. Yeah, it. it should sit. There now we go. you can yeah, you can have two models in the gondola, which means that he can actually have somebody first turn move into it, and then he can row the gondola. Got it. All right, we are gonna put him on top. Okay. Because if he's able to, we want him to. Yes. All right. All right, and then fisherman who seems very angry. Um, <laughs> Where's let's do a little flanky flanky with our fisherman. Okay. All right. I am deployed because no, no. Nope, I got one more model. Citizen. Yep. I have got a, a citizen. Okay. Yes. yes. So, so in the lore, the guild is basically all the guilds put together. Now the now the citizen cannot start on top of the building. Can she go in the gondola with her boyfriend? She, she cannot go in the gondola, but she can go on the tile next to the gondola and then use her first activation to move into the gondola. All right, gotcha. Wishes. All right. Um, so basically all the guilds bound together under the auspice of the Thieves' Guild, and the, and they're pretty much the common men. They're the ones who protect the citizens from the crazy nobles, from the mad doctors, from the monsters from beyond the rent, you know, from the vampires, so basically all the other factions. Okay. So now, my two Rashar have a special wool called Water Creature. Water okay. Creature does two things. Thing number one is that it allows them to deploy in water. So I'm going to go ahead and have them both deploy in water. All right. I think I've got enough room to... Yeah, I've got enough room to put both in there. They... There we go. All right. Um... So then I'll just have my two slaves come close to her. Well, my two slaves, for the most part, they have a special rule that says any Rashar monster, if they are in base to base, then I can remove the slave and heal that monster for five life points. That's so, cool, but not nice, but I got it. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, initiative, if you have no command points, is the same way. You each roll a die. Okay. And then whoever rolls highest. Uh, I'm looking at a one this time. It's probably probably looking good for you, Donald. What'd you yep, end up with? I rolled a five. You did. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the most obviously the most basic action that I could take is movement. Right. Movement's really simple. So I'm going to go through. There's multiple forms. First form is horizontal movement. It's straightforward. You just move your inches. Yep. Um, vertical movement is you make a basic dex roll, which means that you roll your dexterity looking for at least one seven or above. Right. If you make it, then you move your your inches upwards. You can move upwards across a wall. Um, typically, you can, you are blocked by friendly and enemy models. Okay. But if you're moving vertical, you are not blocked. So one of the ways to get around an enemy model is to literally make your roll run across a wall around them. Okay. Um. The next way is jumping. So jumping, you pick the place you want to go, you make a dex roll, and it's considered random movement, which means that the base is two free inches plus one for every ace. Okay. okay. If you roll a critical, you get an additional two inches. If you fail, you go two inches without the extra. If you fumble, you go one inch. All right. Now... Clearly, you can jump off the top of a building, which means that that leaves the last form of movement being falling. Okay. If you end an activation without being fully on a on a flat surface, or you fail a jump, then you can, you take falling damage by the height of where you start to the height of where you end. Okay. So if I fall so, four you know, inches, you... I take four damage. Right. You make a dex check, you subtract one for each of the decks. And acrobatics for the jump, the vertical, the jump, and the fall are all re-rolled if you have it. Got it. So that's what the acrobatics does. Um, 
All of those movements that I mentioned are one action point. Now, once per turn, you'll notice there's like little pieces of debris in the water and there's these boxes. Yep. If you jump onto an object that is too small for your base, so the boxes, the rails of the, of the bridge, then you get a free second jump. Okay. <laughs> so that is, cool. number two, that is number two of the four things that I talked about where you that um, don't count, don't have one action point. It's that free extra jump. Got it. First one was using the command point. If you're in water, you can dive. That's two action points. We'll get into that if we decide to go there. Um, and then the last one is if you move into base-to-base -base combat with an enemy character, and you can do this more than once a turn, you get a free attack. Okay. It's called an attack of opportunity. So that is the fourth one where it's not one action point. That is a zero action point. But that's only if I, I took a move and I ended up in base. Right. Got and it. And it's any one of the movements. So I literally knew a guy who didn't have move, enough movement to get to a model. So he intentionally left his model hanging off, fell into base-to-base -base combat, survived the fall, killed the model, won the game. Very nice. Um, this does have a, a rule called wobbly model. If you end your movement, and you don't have enough movement to get onto a flat surface, then you're allowed to move your model to get onto that surface. That's good. That simplifies things. So that's good. Yeah. All right. So what's the okay. what am I trying to do here? So you're trying to kill this large guy right here. All right. I won't keep. I'll, I'll probably keep him in the water, but I'll try to keep him near bridges and stuff so that you can actually get to him. If All right. you, yeah. You know, um, now, typically, if you're in water, you subtract two off of your movement for swimming. But otherwise, it's just normal horizontal. Since he is water creature, he does not have to do that. Got it. In addition, he has a special rule called Fast Swimmer, which gives him additional movement. So his normal movement on land is three, but when he's in water, his movement's actually a five. All right. So I'll put his first movement roughly there. For his first action point, and uh -huh. then for a second. He's going to sneak under the... Oh. Okay. Let me see if I can get this to work. So he's actually trying to sneak under the bridge. Right. But I'm going to end up having to put him on the bridge That's just fine. because of the nature of the terrain. Yep. So. All right. So he's, he's still That's swimming. Right. So he's under right. the bridge. He's still swimming. All right. Now, alternating activations, I assume? Yes. Alternating. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at our fisherman here. Um, and let's take, all right, so his move is four, so he can move four inches for an action point. So Correct. let's pick him up and let's move him four. Now, am I in range? Range on my harpoon, harpoon gun is eight inches. Let's see how close I am. Okay. Now, I will point out that this... Does you use line of sight rules? Yeah. So since he's under the bridge, you would not oh, be able right, to right, see him right. over the bridge. All right. And, I, and I'm out of range anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Okay. All right. So that's going to be his first action point. Second action point. So we're going to move another four inches. Um, let's go this way. Okay. And by the way, looking at his card reminded me of one other small rule that I forgot to mention that will, co will come into play. Probably because so if you notice he has a protection of five, I believe it was. Okay. If you that movement into attack of opportunity, if you start three inches or above, so basically off top of any of these buildings, then that attack of opportunity gets an additional minus five to the penetration. Cool. So. Okay. All right. So, so I'm this guy is also so. okay. So this guy is also a five. All right. So he's also so got the I'm swimmer ability. Yep. So he has water creature, and so what I'm going to do is I'll move four inches there. That way I can move him six inches this way. Or fast swimmer, that's what I should say. So why do you keep doing There we go. All right. Okay. So now my citizen is going to hop on the boat. Okay. All right, so it'll be our first action. Now, is there any type of dead actions? Um, you, can't, there, you can't do a dead action. The other thing is there's an action called row, which is another one of those random movements. All right. Um, so I want her to row, then. Can she yeah. row? Yes. She can can row. she row, row the boat? Yeah, give me one second. Sorry. 
I looked it up and then I probably forgot it because I don't use a lot of row. I'm pretty sure it's a dex check. Yes, Doug, I'm going to go kill the fish people. That's the idea. I see Dead Aussie Gamer on here. How you doing, man? Yeah. Troll base. Yeah, so it should, be, it should be a dex check. All right, so let's so. check her dex. So her dex is a four. Okay. Um, so does that mean I roll four dice? Yes. Okay, so. Roll one gray and three black. Yep, so there's my destiny plus three other ones. Yes. And what is my target? Is it the same seven, seven. or eight? Yes. Or seven, seven or higher? Se seven or higher. All right, so let's roll. And we ended up with a nine. So I got an ace. Okay. So you got one ace, so that's two inches of movement plus one for the ace. So, so you get to move the boat three inches. Three inches, okay. Do, do. Yeah. All right, we're going to go right there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Right on top of the yeah. right on top of the debris. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. We know where it is. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I'll mess with it here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna rotate it. We're gonna get it over here. All right, and then we're gonna put yeah. him on. We're gonna put her on. Yeah. I'll put him back on. All right, we're good. That was exciting. Okay, good. All right, so now slave time, right? Slave time, yes. So, and so the slaves have a movement of four. Okay. Which you'll find four is standard human. Got it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a, do a move to get them over into this right, area. Right, because he, and keep in mind, he's under the bridge. That's why he doesn't affect her movement. Correct. Yeah. All right, so she crosses the bridge. Yes. Her second action? I did a double movement. I just went ahead and did two. Oh, you went and did eight. Together. Okay, yeah, got sorry. it. All right, so now, Gondola Boy, now that his girl's on the boat, let's take a look here. He, he's he got a dex of four. Right. So now he's fast swimmer. He's brave. So does he, he doesn't do it. Ooh, what is, uh, Bladed Ore is just his weapon. So does he do anything right. special as far as navigating this gondola? Yes. Look at Sculler. Scholar. You can see um, the last sentence says, this character may be deployed in water or on a gondola and may also re-roll failed dice rolls when making roll actions. Got it. All right, cool. All right, so I, same th same dice, because he's got right. the same decks that she does. So we're going to roll those up. And two of them failed. So I'm okay. going to re-roll that one. Oh, no. I'm going to re-roll that one and that one. Okay. So I ended up with two aces. All right. Right? Right. So that's going to give me two plus two. So Correct. four inches? Correct. All right. So we're going to take the boat. We're going to go another four inches. Actually, let's just go just shy of the bridge here. Okay. Yeah. And the one other place that you'll see that, rand that random movement is also with a grapple attack. Where you can actually pick somebody up and throw them. Got it. All right. I'm going to do it again. So he's going to roll, throw okay. again for his second movement. And I got no aces. So I'm going to re-roll everything. I can't re-roll the destiny die, though. Correct. So one, two. How do I? Okay. So re-roll all three of those because his, his special ability. I ended up with two more aces. So that's another four okay. inches. Correct. All right, so toot toot. So gonna, I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna be a little generous with my movement. All right, we yeah, know where the boat right. is. My boat yeah. is gee, right under there. All right, right. All right, and both of them are on there. Okay. So right now they're just gonna lay down because yeah. they're tired. That's fine. All right, so last slave gets to go. So last slave, move four inches. For the first activation, move. We'll move this guy. Second. Yep. So he that slaves right behind him. Alright, okay. so now my badass. Um, right. because I, I I know he's a badass because he looks like a badass. So this is my uh Cappadocia. Yes. And his move is five. And right. he has got the acrobatic special rule, which will help me with his fall, right? Right. Um, so you have so you have two options here. Option one is that you can just roll a basic dex and climb down. Okay. 
Option two is that you can roll a random movement with your decks to jump. So for example, if you wanted to jump from here down to there, that's roughly four inches. Yep. So you'd need two aces. Got it. We're jumping. And then that would give you the free jump from here right, right, over right, right, to right. here, which is six, if you want to try that. Let's do it. Or you could just go down to the bottom and then climb up if you right, prefer so to. He's got a dex of five. Right. He's got a move of yeah. five, sorry. So what's his dex? Uh, his dex is six. Yes. That seems pretty good. So I get two more dice. And we are doing a jump. And I need at okay. least two aces Correct. to get to where I need to go. And that is going to be two aces. A seven. Right. No, and my ten. Okay. So because you rolled a critical, then you actually get four plus the additional aces. If, um, so if you just want to land here. One more time you... for me, Donald. So critical actually gives you additional two inches. All right. So I've got six plus the two. Uh, or no, well, I get no, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am I adding that uh, correctly? How, how many aces did you have? You had so three I aces? Three aces, right? The eight, the Correct. ten, and the seven. So Correct. I get two plus one per ace, right? So that's right. five plus two for the crit. Correct. So seven yes. all day? Yes. Beautiful. I don't need all seven, though, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ninja jump. Right. So by right. doing that, I go to here, and because I'm stopping right. on that, I get a free jump, right? Correct. All right, so we're definitely going to do another free jump because he's pretty okay. good at this. Yeah. Um, so now, where are you trying to jump to? Because the first thing you have to do is oh, pick true, where you're true, 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 true. Um, now, if I let's pretend I can I continue to free jump, or do you only get one uh, free jump? You only get one free jump per activation. Per activation. Okay. So yeah. what I want to so, do now is I want yeah. to I'm going to jump this direction basically. Okay. Um. So I don't need any target, right? I just need to. Not fail. Yeah. Well, yeah. You you pick where you plan on landing so that you know whether or not you actually make it. You have to have, you have, to have enough inches to make it to the place you pick um, for purposes of falling. But any additional movement you have left, you can move in a horizontal direction. So theoretically, like if you're trying to go in this direction. Oh, so, yeah, I'm only you trying to move two inches very bottom. Then, right? Right. It's silly for me to pick something higher than that, right? Exactly. Got it. Okay. It mainly comes into play, like, I think most of these buildings are single story, but if you get, like, dual story buildings, yeah, like, to try to get to this dual story where it's six inches up, yep. you can only jump up three, but that's where you start really Got it. carrying. Got it. All right. So now I'm looking for aces, which is seven or higher. So it's one, two aces. So I get two okay. by default plus those two. So that's, I get to go four well, inches now. Plus, you get to re-roll whatever your acrobat oh, is. Right, acrobat two. So that means I can grab him and re-roll him and grab her and re-roll her. So look at that. One, two, three, four, five. I got four aces. Okay. So that's two. That's six inches. Right. And this was just one activation. He is just bouncing all over the place. Yeah. That's kind of a cool mechanic, Doug. I like that. Yeah, it is. Or Doug, yeah, they, Donald. Uh, yeah, they originally had it so you could do it more than once a turn, and they basically had people trying to kangaroo the entire board. I bet. That's I why. Bet. It's, that's why it's limited to a single. All right. Practice. So now... now the attack of opportunities are, is not limited. Okay. So right. if you charge the slave and happen to kill him in one attack, which I don't think will happen, but if it happens, then you could use your third action to attack of opportunity the next slave. All right. So the range on his twin blades is zero. So I need to get in base contact. Correct. Um, so I, for my second action, I'm just going to move. And get into base right. contact with her. Correct. And anything more th less than an inch, you can go over just fine. You just park her over it. Got it. So the that corner there, that you don't have to worry about. All right. So I am okay. now gonna swipey swipey. Okay. Cut me a slave. Um, so now the slave is got a dexterity of three. All right. Against. So I'm gonna do six dice. Uh, my, it's your attack. Oh, my attack. Five dice for yeah. my attack. And then I've got no extra evasion or anything. So it's just going to be, I just got to beat her dex. And her dex is right. what? Her dex is a three. All right. So I just got to beat a three with five dice. Right. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, if you notice, he has expert offense, which means he gets to reroll up to two dice when he's in base-to-base -base contact. He is pretty good. 
Yeah. All right. So I want to re-roll you is the only one I want to re-roll. And all right. So that is four. That's five plus. Okay. He's plus one on the weapon. So that's going to be six into you, right? right. And I have a... let's look at no. her card here. I have a protection of two. Yep. So I get to roll my two dice, and I am looking for a seven. Just your standard thing, which you didn't get. Right. right. I got two threes. Uh huh. So now, so I take all six points, and each of these counters you will notice have been set up, and so all you have to do is just click the down arrow. Yep. And she's gonna be got down to four, right? Correct. All right. Cool. Um, oh, uh, Goslato, this is, uh, this is Donald, um, uh, my buddy Donald. Uh, he's a patron. Um, he and I chat all the time. He's the one that sent me all my carnival uh, goodies because he's a good person. Um, and this is all his creation. So, Well, mostly. So the, a the actual official assets are TT Combat assets, so the graphics, the standings, the cards, etc. Um, but the rest of it, pulling the assets from the files and stuff was done by me. Yeah, Gusladdo, I probably did call him Doug by mistake. I'm terrible with names. I've called him Donald like three different names already, so. Yeah. He's too nice to correct me. Okay, so that was your second action point. So what do you want to do with your third? Oh, that's right. He's got three, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even look at that. All right, so he's going to he's gonna swipey swipe again. Okay. So he's going to do his five attack. And I need, again, fours, right? No, you need, I think it's threes, right? Uh, was that what her three. dex is? Three? Yes. So, and, and that means I have to beat three or go three or higher? Three or higher. That's All your right. target number. All right. So I get to re-roll that one, that two, because of his special ability. Right. So we we'll re-roll that. It's a bad day for her. So that's five into her again, plus the plus one for my weapon. So that's six. Okay. She's got to do her little protection. Right. She's a, she needs an ace, which is a seven or higher. So I got one. I don't see which one. So that's it. So, okay, so now here's here's a very important part. Yeah. I rolled a 10 on the destiny die, which counts as an ace. Right. But because I did not get an additional ace, it is not a critical. No crit. Yep. yep. So she takes five damage, and she had four hit, four life points. So she is no moss. from the boar. Bye, slave. Yes. Okay. And that's turn one. That's turn one. Now, do we roll initiative again for turn two? Yes. Yes, we, would, we do re-roll initiative each time. Same thing, just one die? Yep, one die high High goes first. All right. And I had a nine, and then it rolled over to a one. That's, that's good. So. I like that. <laughs> we don't want fish people messing with me, so let's now roll. Now, one thing I will point out, if you start your an activation in water or then you can only use weapons that have the aquatic rule okay which is why i'm trying to get my guys near near so you can still attack them from over here got it um that's where the unarmed comes into play. unarmed always has aquatic got it so got it all right so i rolled an eight so i get to go first right yes all right um his range is zero on that so he is not going to mess with them he's going to try to kill another slave Okay. So he's going to do his move for his first of three action points. Okay. Get into base contact with you, and because of that, I get a, a free attack of opportunity. Correct. Um, all right. So this is going to be one of three. So let's look at his card again so that we can remember that we're going to be using his attack value, which is five. And we're using our twin blades, which you can see in his hand. So we need four more of these guys. All right, and then we highlight and rolly roll, and ooh, I didn't even think about my target. So what? Uh, same thing, right? Any three or higher? Right. He's a slave as well. Um, so not a not, not a bad roll. We got one three, but I get to re-roll these, right? Because I get to do re-roll up to two of them. Let's look at the card and remember why. So let's go back to the card, and you see he's got uh, expert offense two. So I get to re-roll two dice. So let's do that. Doesn't look good for the slave. That's another f five okay. plus one because of the weapon. OK. 
Can he protect himself? He protects for one. Right. Protect for one. Yep. So that's gonna five end, points. That's going to be net five, right? Because I got right. five successes plus one, and then the protected one of them, so he nets five. Correct. So that puts him down to five. Right. And I've got two action points left. So this, yes. might, this might be bad. <laughs> Um, all right, so not a great roll. We only got two successes. And remember, I can't re-roll my destiny, so that's frozen. Let's re-roll right. you and you. All right, so then we ended up here with three plus the one, so it's four into you, Donald. Okay, so I will point out something. You yep. re-rolled a success. Oh, I did? Yeah, that three that rolled a one oh. was actually because the dex was a three. Got it. So we'll just go ahead and count that as the Sweet. three. I like that. So that's four. Okay, so that's so plus one is for five. Four plus one, right? So you need to fail all of these, which you do not. Nope. All right. So he's left with one. Yes. Which means I'm now going to use my third action point. I am annoyed that the slave has taken all three of my action points. So that's I'm one, not. two, three, four, five plus one sixes. Six into you. Okay. Impossible well, for I, you to survive, but let's roll yeah, it anyway. So, so we can see mechanically. You're looking for aces. Right. You got zero aces. So I... Because, okay, so you'll notice I rolled a one on the destiny die. Yep. Plus no aces. That's a fumble. A Ooh. fumble protection means I actually take an extra point of damage. So you're super so, dead. So six points, he takes seven. Yeah, he's dead dead. All right. Get him off my bridge. But hey, you know, he's speed bumped. And <laughs> All that right. can be important sometimes. So the slaves are gone. Now I just got the monsters to deal with. Right. So, um, uh, so Gislato, normally it's a three by three board, but we're just doing this as a demo. Um, yeah, yeah, and you got to root for me, man. This might be the only game of Carnivale I ever win. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and, and also um, I mentioned earlier it's 100 ducats. It works out to be about 7 to 10 maybe 11 models typically got it um so i'm going to activate this guy so because he's starting in water his first action is going to be a move okay which is five inches now to enter or exit water is one inch of movement so for him to to actually get up on the, the cobblestone he gets four left four left Correct. got it so he can move four right now question for you if you weren't yes. being nice to me would you be better off leaving him in water um it for this particular mission at the moment i would say probably not okay and the reason for that is because my goal of the mission is to keep this guy alive got it so i was actually kind of glad that it that the speed bump took your third action right because my concern was that you'd move on to the bridge so now he i can do for a second action his right because he's not three. here is it, your, your big guy is under the right. bridge the big guy's under the bridge. Yeah. But if you had moved onto the bridge, because I only get three inches of movement, I wouldn't have enough to engage you. Got it. Which is what I am trying to do, and it's... it's... All right, so we're going to put yeah. you in base. I got you. Okay, cool. All right, Sorry. so you're going to attack me, right? Right. Yeah. All right, cool. But yes, the the shore monsters do definitely work better in water. Uh -huh. Obviously, they have aquatic, um, and I have actually surprised people at how quick they can move when they're in water. Yeah, oh, that extra two there, I was like, he you, you was cranking along. All right, so this right. is the lesser Ugdra. Correct. And he's got claws. His attack is five. And penetration is negative one, which is that's bad for you. Bad for you. Bad for me. So. Okay. Penetration adds to your protection when you're rolling, so you lose a die got when it. you're trying to roll after my got damage. Got it, got it, got it. So got it lowers it. my protection by one. Correct. So you roll five dice. Now you're going to have to go. For me, my protection is three, but because of the minus one, it's only two. Right, but first I need your dex because that's my target number. All right, so it's six. Uh, six is my dex, so... Right. Okay, and since I have no evasion, then my target number is a six. All right, right. So roll. One. Uh, pretty good roll. Two, three, 
So it looks like you take four damage because I don't have any additional damage. Right, so let's look but here. At his, a, yep, his my, card, if you look on his card, there's no additional damage. So that's right. four damage into me. Now, what I get to do is look at my protection, which is normally three, but because of your weapon having the minus one pen, it now becomes two. So I just roll two dice, and I need aces, which is seven or higher. Correct. And if you notice, both of my monsters have protection of, well, my lesser egg drew has a protection of five, and my red drew has a protection of six. That is where jumping off of buildings come into play. Is because since that's an additional minus five, you would completely negate the lesser Grood's um, protection by doing that. Got it. All right, so I got one, one ace. So I'm going to end up taking four damage. Is that right? Correct. That is correct. So I'm going to go here to my 13. I'm just going to go down to a nine. Right. How many AP does he have? Oh, that's he building. has two. He's only got two actions. You can see that in the yellow up top. So he's done. Correct. All right. Now, it only seems fitting that the fisherman goes after the fish. Okay. So let's go to the fisherman. And he has a move of four. I don't think he can get... Well, let's hold on a second. Let's move him back. Let's calm the hell down here. Let's look at the range on his on his weapon. Yeah. All right, so he could do. Oh, he only needs two for the spear. Um, let's pretend that I picked the spear, not the gun, right? Okay. So we're gonna say. So I I actually just need to be within six inches of him. So let's move four. Yes. Now I will point out. Yeah. While you have a range of two, the attack of opportunity is only when you move into base to base. Got it. So. So I'm, now I'm gonna have to use how many action points does he have? He only has two actions, so this will be my second action. I'm going to attack you with the spe the pole spear, okay. which is my attack is four, and I have a plus one damage. And okay. your dex is four. So I four is my target, and I roll four dice. So I've already got two in the tray. Let's add two more. One, two... Uh, question, Donald, uh, is pre-measuring allowed in Carnival? Yes. It is, okay. All right, so let's roll. We need a four, kids. That is just the one. Now, does he have my little cool special ability that my ninja guy has? He has expert offense one, so I get to re-roll one die. It can't be my destiny die. So I've got one, two, so I'm going to re-roll that one. All right, so I've got just two successes, the 7 and okay. the 10. So I'm, I'm going to be a little pedantic here because I've had someone get confused on rules because of this. You have two aces, which gives you a success. Got it. Two, two aces. It's, like I said, it's, there's, a, there's a few things where I'm, I'm pedantic because I've actually had people say, well, it says if you get a success, do this, but she had three successes, so what do I do? Got it. No, that makes sense. That's what gives me the success, but there's two of them. Right. Plus the plus one damage means it's three into you. Okay. So now I have a protection. Does your let's take a look at uh, my weapon spear here. Let's take have... a look here. It has plus one damage and nothing for penetration. Okay. So normally I would have a protection of five, but he has a special rule called Hunter. Ooh, let's take a look at it. And what Hunter does is any other than unarmed any weapon attacks against a a model with a larger base size, which my lesser drew is a 40 mil, and he's a 30 mil, is an additional minus three penetration. Ooh, okay. So your normal your normal protection is three. My normal is five. All right. So now you're just two because of the minus right. three. Nasty. Yeah. And you also notice what his command ability is. Uh, I do not, but let's go do that. Let's go check my command ability. Uh, my command ability, bring it down. One friendly character within six inches gains the hunter special rule until the end of its next animation. So my uh, um, Cap Capodicea now has hunter as well. Well, if you spend if you spend the command point to do it. Ah, okay. And, when, and but, does that take anything? It just takes it the takes command point away, points. right? Correct. All right. 
All right. All right. So let's let's see what happens here. So I rolled no aces. Okay. And what did we say your damage was? Well, we're plus one, and I have three three aces, or t yeah, two aces. Two aces. Yeah. So, so it's going to be three damage, and you take all three of them. Now I'm going to spend the command point. And that is going to be his only command point. So now, Cuddy Cuddy Blady Boy has now got Hunter as well. Okay. All right. So, so what do we have? Let's take a look at Homeboy now has how much life left? Ten left? He has ten left. All right. He's pretty hardy. A lot hardier than the yeah. slave. Yeah. Now, act, this... question for you. Any mechanic yeah. for the fact that I've got more activations than you? No. Okay. This doesn't do pass tokens or anything like that. Got it. Um, okay. So I guess I'm going to activate him. I'm just going to move him back to roughly yep, where he was. He so that, he's sl yeah. skulking around under the bridge. Right. So he is going to try to get away from these guys because That's they smart. hurt. Yep. So he, in water, he has five. So he's going to do this first. Yeah. And then you can basically ignore debris in the water. Right. Um, but that's like, valuable for jumping, though, right? Correct. And Got that's it. literally why that's there, so that you can do a double jump. Yeah. That should, because I think when I picked it up, yeah. So I just realized when I picked it up, it, because we're on 3D, it set it to 1, so okay. I'm going to to basically there all right so now let's activate my lovely citizen and she's gonna row that gondola because her her and him are on the gondola he's singing right. to her she's like well and, and he's kind of a jerk because he's like you know hey i need you to row and she's like well, what the hell yeah, what kind of date is this <laughs> but um she's gonna do it anyway because he's He's dreamy. All right, so this is going to be a dex because it's this random movement thing that you've talked about, which gives me the default two, and then if I succeed, I add an inch for each ace, right? Correct. Right. Wow, look at me. All right, yeah, so and if you notice, one. there's only one ore, and he's got it. Oh, so he hands her the ore. <laughs> gotcha. He says, "Look, look. If we're gonna get, if we're gonna make it to dinner, I need you to go ahead and row." So. All right, so he goes down here. This is going to be a terrible date, though, because they're headed towards the the uh, the Gibby. All right, so we're going to roll. Hey, he just promised her sushi. He did say <laughs> Ah, <that>. nice. <laughs> you like sushi? All right, um, so I got no aces. Um, okay. So she, or no, I did. I got one. I'm sorry. My destiny die is an ace. Yes. So, that, so that's going to be two plus one. So she gets to move the boat three inches. Correct. And I will point out that even though you rolled a 10 on the Destiny die because you didn't get an additional ace, you did not get the critical. No crit. All right, so we go to there. Now, question. Okay. If they're both yes. on the gondola, does that mean that they measure from the gondola? So are they considered to be anywhere on the gondola, or would it be where the yeah, model pretty is? Much. On okay. I mean, it says, it, it says that you can move the gondola at that many inches, and that the... I mean, traditionally, it's assuming that it's where you're on the gondola because it does mention that... Um, you cannot move a model farther than the total number of inches. You can move the gondola farther as long as no model on the gondola moves more than the random uh, inches. Makes sense. Makes so, sense. All right, but so we basically, I basically have been assuming for measurement purposes that he's in the back seat and she's in the front seat. All right, cool. All right, so she's in the front seat. Does she have right. – what's her attack situation? Let's take a look. All right, so her arrange for improvised weapon – is zero so she is not going to be able to attack from here she's right. not close enough so she is going to once again like a good date she's going to row again so we're going to do that random movement again and she got one ace with the eight uh, okay. uh right the five doesn't count um she has no ability to re-roll that so it's going to be two right. plus my six my aces um, and to use the language correctly, I succeeded because I got at least one ace. And right. then my movement is two plus the number of aces, right? Correct. All right. So exactly. Three inches. So she is going yeah. to 
get the boat nice and, and cozy. I was say, and remember, when you pick it up, because of the way it's set, because it's set for 3D, uh -huh. um, it does, you basically lose an inch. I didn't realize that until just recently, so if uh, you set cool. it to, yeah. So we're just going to, we're going to, I'm going to get yeah. it in the base here. I understand. Uh, yeah, you're gonna basically you're moving it to where the yeah arrow was. All right. Yeah, you need to move a little bit farther because you're. What's happening is you keep clipping the bridge. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Let's flip That's it. Fine. Let's rotate it. That's the only thing I that gets a little annoying because um, I played MCP yeah. on here and Legion on here. Yeah. And, that's the physics are great, uh, but the stuff like this gets a little a little annoying. Yeah. Um, and there's not is there an undo? There is not. All no. Right. And the problem is is that I'm anal, right? So I can't just be satisfied. Look at that! Oh, Thanks. nailed it! <laughs> All right. So the boyfriend is in the back. So you have CDO. Uh, what is that? It's OCD, but the letters are in the right order. Oh, nice. <laughs> Um, all right. She is tired. So tired. Okay, she's just going to lay down for a bit. All right, so that okay. was that was her two actions. Okay. And both of mine have gone, so, so you get to do your other two actions. So or, or boy is going to go now. So he has got, right. uh, he's got two actions, and his bladed or is range two, so no problems there. And it's got a negative one penetration. Now, two-handed, what does that do? So what that does is you lose an attack die if you're doing an attack of opportunity. Got so it. if he goes charging into base to base, but because you're actually spending an action, you're not yep. charging into base to base, All he right, doesn't lose So this. my attack, so I'm going to get three dice. So let's start off getting my dice pool correctly. So we're going to get rid of one of those dice. Oh, and by get rid of it, I'm just going to put it back in there. All right. So next, I need to see my target. So let's look at Big Boy. Big Boy's dex is three. Uh, so my target is three. Uh, whoops. And my penetration's negative one. That doesn't mean anything now, right? Um, it would right. be evasion that I'd be looking for to modify from that dex, right? Exactly. All right. So and he does not have any... All right, so I have no adjustment. So I just need a straight three. Three is what gives me a success. So let's give it a rolly roll. Um, so Monster Behind the Mask says, uh, two-handed adds one evasion while on charge, he says. Okay. All right, so we're going to roll. Ooh, that's good. That's three. Okay. All right, and you're now, let's take a look at my weapon here. Um, my weapon is penetration negative one. So what is your pen? Your pen, uh, your protection is six. So it's going to be five because of my ore, Correct. right? Correct. All right. One, and I got, and I got damage is plus one. And if we look here, so I've got four going into you. Okay. And you need just straight success. You need aces. Right. Correct. And now let's That's watch check. I do not believe. Okay. Oops, roll one. Okay, he does not have expert protection, so he does not get to re-roll. So you take quattro. Yes, I take all four of them. So um, I do not remember what the name of it is. One, two, three. Four. So you might want to put it in. Actually, I do. It's called Monsters Behind the Mask. Um, but Monsters Behind the Mask actually does a really good Carnival podcast. Oh, nice. What's the, what, do we know so, the name of it? Hey, Monster, tell us the name of your podcast so we can plug it, man. I, I think it's actually Monsters Behind the Mask. Oh, but, well, it's very yeah. creative. I handle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So we need to check that uh, podcast out then, huh? Yeah. All right. So that was my first action. Correct. Um, we are going to do the same thing. So to recap real quick, or boy has got an attack of three. That's why I'm rolling three dice. And we determined the decks of the rod is only three. So I got to get a three or higher to succeed. So let's roll. Um, so that is, um, 
Oh, Monster, we're, trying, we're getting you to plug your podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Uh, Donald says it's a really good Carnivale podcast. All right, so that's two plus my weapon is plus one, so that's three into you. Okay. You get the same protection dice. And I, I like the... Uh, is that considered cocked? Reroll your destiny there. That's cocked. Okay. All right, so that's so, Monsters Behind the Mask. And that, is that available, I assume, yeah. Monster, on all, all platforms? All right, so that means uh, you get... From my three, you're only going to take two, right? Uh, one, correct? Because I have a ten on that die and a seven oh, on... You know, I keep looking at that at zero. I'm an idiot. It's like I haven't played role-playing no games before, for crying out loud. Like, I don't know how to read a D10. Yes, so yeah. you only take the, one. By the way, if you mouse over the die, it pops up and shows you what the die rolled. You don't have to rub it in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you just lose one. So you go from 16 down right. to 15. And I have activated all my people. Okay. You have activated all your fish. Yes. So now we're going to get rid of these two black dice. Yep. And I'm going to see if I can go three for three on beating you for initiative. Maybe not. Uh, all right, I got a five. What'd you get? A nine. A nine's pretty good. All right, so you, what are you going to do first, though? Do you go with a big guy who's got, like, not a whole lot of threat here? Or are you going to try to beat up on uh, Cuddy McCutterson? Um, I'm probably going to go with the big guy. All right. Now, are we going to go after my date, or are we going to go after... Uh... No. Yeah, we're, we're going to go after um, your, your dude. My gondolier? Yeah. You're going to make, so him, now, make him look bad in front of his girl? I'm hoping to make him look dead in front of his girl. That's not nice. <laughs> now, right. one thing um, you'll notice is that he has a range of zero, yes. which means he does need to move well, to get to the gondolier. So my question, that's part of my question, I guess, is you're, you're zero yeah. to my gondola. Right. But you're still going to measure it from the base of my gondolier. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Because I'm zero with the citizen, yep. I have to do a disengage. Okay. Now, the way a disengage works is we do an opposed dex check. Which means we both roll, seven, we both roll our dex. Uh-huh. Mine is a three. And I'm not sure what yours is. My dex is a four. Here's, okay. So I roll three dice. Right. And you roll four. I roll my four dice. Drop, drop, and drop. We're looking for seven. And let's see here. Uh, that would be three aces, sir. Okay. So I didn't roll any aces, so it doesn't matter. But just to explain how an opposed works is you, I subtract your aces from my aces, and then I calculate the results. Got it. So I got so three. This, I got none. Okay. Now, so because you got three, even if I rolled three on all, th even if I rolled all three of them, as A says, it still would have been zero. Got it. So for a disengage, I am allowed to move because it's success. A fumble, I can't move. But because it's a failure, your citizen gets a free attack of opportunity Ooh. before I move. So she doesn't like the fact that you beat up on her new boyfriend. So she's going to attack you using her four decks. Now, question for you. You are yes. in zero of her, but if you weren't, would she still be able to take this attack of opportunity? If I, no. Um, and disengage, but the thing is, disengaging only occurs when you're leaving base to base from an enemy got model. It. Got it, got it, so, got it. All right, so she's going to go um, ahead and she's going to go after you. Her target is going to be your decks, which is three. So she just needs a three or higher on four dice. And we got three successes. Um, I don't think okay. her weapon has any extra. Nope. So it's going to be nope. three into use. I'm sorry. She got one success because she got at least an ace, but she got three aces. So it's three damage into you. Okay. And... You're only going to take two of it, or one of it, right? Because you one just, of it. Yeah, Correct. you got two two aces, and so that now puts Fishboy at fourteen. Fourteen. So now he gets to take his movement. 
Okay. Let's zoom in to let's go put him there. Yeah. So he swims and down he... and he's reaching out on the bo right. out of the water into my gondola. And now he gets his free attack of opportunity. Right. Which is five he's dice. Now in zero. Okay. And you need to know tar your target. So let's look at my dex. Right. Uh, my dex is four, so you need a four or higher. Okay. And let's One. double check. Oh, it's a crit, too. Uh, two, that's three. four. So I've got... So you automatically take one life point loss. Okay. And then I have three aces. Four aces, because that still counts as an ace, four. right? Oh, that's right. Sorry. I was looking at sevens. I was looking at seven or above. Yep. I forgot your dex is a four. So four aces. And his damage is a plus two. Whoa, so so you roll six. Your, yeah, your All protection right. gets a plus two. But we're going to first off drop one because of the crit. Correct. So that's dumb. Now remember, he probably has some level of life points. So he, or, I'm sorry, will points. Yep. He does have two will points. You can spend those will points one for one to add additional dice. All right, we're going to spend ace. both of them. Okay. So his will is the blue thing. He's got two of them. He's going to go down to zero. So now, normally, his protection is four. But we're going to add two dice. And I need aces. So I've got one ace. Do I have anything special yep. for protection? So what you're looking for is expert protection. And I do not have that. So I only save against one. You did five into me. Is that right? Or Double it check it. One, two, three. It was six. All right. So I'm going to take five damage. That hurts. Right. All right. I've only got five left. Yeah. Okay. Because that attack of opportunity was a free action. He saw his one action point, which yep. he used to hit you again. Same dice pool. Two, nope, nope. Three, right? Three. Three. Plus, so that's plus the two. So that's right. five damage. That's five into me. And I lose two dice. Correct. Because those are from your willpower. And I need aces. And I got two of them. Okay. So that was how much into me again? I started at five, so the two aces would take it down to three. All right. So I'm going to take down to two life. Now, if those two had been swapped, um, so you'd gotten a crit instead, yep. then you would all then you protect an additional point. Nice. So when you fumble an attack, or when you fumble protection, you take an extra life. When you crit a protection, you you protect against an extra life. Yep. All right. Cool. So is that it for? Um... Yes, that's it for big and nasty. All right, big and nasty is done. <sighs> now. My suggestion would be to go with the fisherman. Yep. It's to wear down the Idru, to leave action points where your um, yep. Cappadocia may be able to run over this bridge and then jump down and attack the Idru. All right, so he's going to get into base to base. And because of that, okay. I get a free attack. Right. So yes. my attack for the fisherman is uh, a four with plus one damage. Okay. And my target is going to be your three dexterity. So I need a three or higher. Dex of four. So oh, this is the lesser four? accrued. Oh. Yeah, you're looking at the red. Yeah, dexterity four. So my target's four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I need fours or higher. And we got three of them. Do I get any kind of special rerolls or anything? Let's take a look. Uh, oh, expert offense one. So I can reroll a die. So we're going to take this two and reroll that. That is four into you, plus one. So that's five, because I get a plus one to my weapon. Okay. And I have a protection of five, but I lose three because of your hunter roll. Oh, that's right. I'm hunter. That's right. So you only get two so, dice. Right. So it looks... No. So I take all five. Yeah. I know. What does that do for you? That brings you down to five, right? Yep. Correct. All right. Okay, so that was just one of his actions. Right. He has got a total of two, so we're going to do the same thing again. 
I'm looking for fours. And we have got, ooh, a crit. We like crits. Okay. Yes. Now I'm going to reroll this two because of okay. my special ability. All right. So that, sir, is four plus the one. So that's five into you. Okay. So and so, I've removed one life point for the crit. Yep. And then you said you did, and then you did five damage. Five damage, and you still have the negative to your uh, protection because of hunter. Right. All right. So you take four. Does Which that... is exactly how many he had left? Because if you hadn't have critted, you would have one life point left. That's right. You critted. So that is that is some sushi gone. Yeah. All right. So he's done. And as it yes. turns out, so are you now because I took him out. Right. So everything comes down to or or boy. And choppy choppy. Right. Right. Because or boy hasn't gone yet. Correct. And he is not feeling great. He's only got two life left. So let's go ahead and let's bladed ore. So it's not just an ore. It's an ore with a blade. Yes. And we are going to attack three. So I get rid of one of these dice. We know your dex is three. So that's my target. Let's get a crit, maybe. No. All right. So that's two, two three successes. Three successes. Okay. My bladed ore is plus one. So that's four into you, sir. He does not have Hunter. Right. His weapon has a penetration of minus one. Okay, so I lower your... your you, Normally your protection is five, right? Uh, six. Six, so now it's just five. Yeah. Yeah, the um, the lesser red drew is one higher dex than the red drew, one lower protection. Got it. And now you're looking for aces, so you're looking for sevens or higher. Yeah. Correct. So let's see what I got. One, no... Dose. I got two. All right, and I. So, what did we say your damage coming was? Coming into you for four. Four. Okay, so I take two damage. Yeah. That gets you down to twelve. Right. And I get to do it all again with my second yes. action point. That is a crit. Because I've got the 10 on my destiny die. And okay. I don't have anything that lets me re-roll anything. So that's going to be two successes. In, or one success for two plus the one. So it's three into you. Plus you lose a life point from my crit. Right. I've already removed the life point for the crit. Okay. So it's three into you, sir. And I protect against one. It's not a crit because I don't have another ace. Yep. So that is two. All right. So so to clarify that, he did get the 10 on his destiny die, but he needed another ace here for that to count as a crit. So so Orboy boys got you down to nine. So yeah. Here's where the big nasty comes into play. Right. So, so now you can mix horizontal and vertical movement. Okay. So you, if you want to go around, you can do that. If you want to go up, you can figure out how much movement is to the building and then start climbing up if you you can end an action not on a flat surface but you can't end an activation Got so it. for example if you have two inches left and i know this is three you can move the first two on the first action and then for your second action spend one to get up there and then move across so his movement is five right so hold on Whoop, whoop, yeah. resume game. All right, so I'm going to go... I can get up to here, right? So what you would do, if if you wanted... You can jump up there, right. but if you're doing actual normal movement, you would go, it looks like, two yeah. inches, two and a half to the bottom, and then two and a half up. And then your second activation would be half an inch up, four Got and a half it. across. But if I, But I could potentially jump up here, right? Correct. So, and then if I did jump yeah. up there, I would get another free jump. You would not because this is a surface you can land on. You only get that free jump if you end on a surface Got it. that you can't end an activation Got on. Got it. All right. So, what I'm so that being said, do, I don't think I'm going to go you, over the building. I'm going to go around. Okay. 
Yeah, the main reason to go over the building would be when you landed on this side from the jump, you'd get that minus five. Right. Which would put you at minus eight because you have Hunter. All right, so that's four inches, which I think was my move, or was it okay. five? Move was five. All right, so I get and another don't inch. forget you need to add. Yeah, and don't forget you need to add an inch because when you pick it up, it adds an inch. Oh, okay. So I get to go two two inches. Right. So basically, to three here. Yeah. All right. So that's one. Now we're gonna do it again to get within to zero. Which means I'll get and a free attack. Go ahead. Right. For purposes of the verticality, if you are an inch or less, which you are because these are one inch, uh -huh. then it counts. Now, if I was, if this was large enough where you were on top of it and I moved into base-to-base -base combat contact of it because it's larger than one inch, then I'm not considered a base-to-base. -base. Got it. Got it. Now, I gave him the hunter ability, the, the fish guy. Right. My fisherman passed that along to him. Right. So... Let's go to my attack. So my attack value is five. So let's get five dice in there. Okay, my target is going to be the three because that's his dexterity. So I need threes. All right, so I missed only on one of these, but those of you playing the home game i've got my expert offense two so i get to reroll up to two dice i only need to reroll one of them so i'm going to reroll that one that is still a one and i can't reroll a reroll so that's one two three four plus my weapon my nasty blades are plus one so that's five into you sir now remember okay. i'm hunter right so my protection would normally be a six but it's down to a three. Yep. It's minus that being three said, I also have two willpower. So I'm mm. going to spend one on this. Oops, wrong direction. I'm going to spend one on this roll and leave one for the next attack that I know is about to come up. Got it. So right. you're basically you're going to add a free die because of your willpower. Right. All right. Correct. So you need you need aces. You need sevens or higher. Right. One. I got two. Two against my uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you're going to take okay. three. That's going to get you down to six. Okay. All right. So I've got one. He's got three action points. Right. So let's do this again. With my attack value of five, I need threes or better. Let's see a crit. That is not a crit, but it is five successes plus the one is six. Okay. So that's going to be, yeah. you're going to go ahead and spend that other point. So you still get your four dice. Correct. Six into you. You get none of these and he's dead ski. Yep. So how did I do? You five, did better than that. Five, you got rid of three of them. So you only three. take three. So you're in trouble. Yep. But you survived that turn. Right. All right. So this is now turn three. Uh, is this three or four? Uh, don't know. Let's say four. I think it should be four because in turn two, you killed two of my slaves. Turn three, you killed my... Got it. Cause, so. All right. So we're going to grab one yeah. Destiny die. We're going to give that a rolly yeah. roll. I meant, to, I meant to add a large... D6 so I could track the, the turns. That's why I do it. The store and I forgot. So I got a seven. I got a nine. Okay, so you get to go first. Yeah, we're gonna try to finish this off, Donald. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's fine. uh Capodocina is going to pull out his twin yeah. blades and he's gonna swipey swipe on you. Um he says, Leave the two lovebirds alone. Angry fish person. We're gonna attack. Well, like with... I said, you know. He, he's He's one of the lieutenants in the Thieves Guild, and like I said, they they protect the citizens from creatures Excellent. like this, so it makes perfect sense. So I've got an attack value of five. Now, I've got four will, which I have not used, yes. and I can use yes. now, right? Correct. You can use up to two points. Let's do that. Will. Let's go ahead and go from four to two, and that allows me to add two more dice. Right. 
All right. We need threes. All right, so we've got... You are a success. You. 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 All right, but we have two fails or two non-aces, but if you remember, kids, for those of you playing at home, I've got expert offense two, so we can go ahead and re-roll these two dice. All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven plus one. That's eight into you, sir. I still okay. have that hunter ability. No, because you that was until the end of that model's next activation. Well, let's pretend so it was finished. It, that's pretend it didn't go work that way. <laughs> <laughs> so nah. you, you're going to get all six. Um, okay. Let me see. Do I have anything that adjusts your protection? So let's look at my weapon. Uh, no. So you're going to get all six. Okay. I don't think it's really going to matter. One. Two. Where's the second one? So I've got a seven right here. Oh, and the ten. Yep, 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 yep. I've got yep, a ten nice right there. Yep. All right, so that was against my one, two, three. Against my seven, so it's five damage. Right, and I only have three life. The canals of Venice have been cleansed. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and that and this is the type of thing that you know when you talk about getting down to rolls, because what my pl so there's a I mentioned there's an attack called grapple. Uh huh. Pretty much what my plan had been if I'd won initiative was I was going to throw a grapple in the sky. I get an extra point. It's an opposed attack roll, and I get an extra die on my attack because I'm a larger base. And I was going to throw him this way into the water. I was going to grab this guy and throw him this way into the water as my two actions, and try to clear the deck. Got it. So this is so this is definitely one of those places where, you know, little little dice rolls matter. All right. So we got a couple things to talk uh, about real quick. One, sure. the game is Carnivalic. Uh, it's put out by TT Combat. Um, if you listen to episode ninety eight of Tabletop Talk podcast, you can hear me interview one of the designers, Lewis. Good guy. Um, I played using the guild, which uh, Donald was kind enough to send me a box of guild. Um, so we can at some point, probably when I finish Rumble Slam. Uh, we'll paint a little bit of foe, and then let's get these guys painted up. Um, I'm excited to paint him. Um, he's a pretty model. Um, and uh, Lewis was too nice to me. Um, and when he sent me the Rumble Slam, he also sent me a gondola to go with my gondolier. Um, so now I've also got a gondola. Um, and TT Combat has all the terrain you need. Um, if you've not looked at their terrain, I don't care whether you play Carnivale or not. The terrain is amazing. I use it for foe all the time. It builds easy. It looks gorgeous. Um, it's MDF terrain that once you have it put together and painted, doesn't look like MDF terrain. And people that have used MDF terrain know exactly what I mean by that. Because sometimes you can buy MDF terrain and the first thing people say when they look at it, it goes, oh, it's MDF. I can tell by looking at it. Uh, but TT Combat does a really good job. Um, uh, Donald, again, was kind enough uh, to teach me the game. Uh, I doubt it will be the last time I play this because this was this was fun. Um, nice and simple, nice and quick. Donald, any last thoughts? Yes, yeah, so there is one thing that I had mentioned at the beginning I wanted to bring up about the command points. Um, the way we did initiative is not the normal way you do initiative. So command points are used for four things. The first thing, the command that we talked about. Um, the second thing is a model can use another model's command points to get an additional action point if they have less than three. So like in some of these clutch places where you needed that one extra shot in a full game, you'd been able to do that. You can do an out of activation using a command point. So you get one action. And then the last one, which is the most common, is that's actually how you do initiative. Traditionally, we each pick one model that has command points. We roll their current command stat so as you use those points, those numbers go down. Nice. A crit beats everything. Success beats a failure or a fumble. Failure beats a fumble. If you both have successes, then it's the highest number of aces. Very and then if cool. you roll, um, if one side has command points and the other does not, the one who does not automatically loses. Got it. Which is why I didn't use it because you did, I didn't. Yep. If neither side has them. Then we'd use the highest, which was what we used. Got it. Got it. All so. right. So a couple shout outs in the chat. Um, uh, Monster Behind the Mask uh, says his stuff is available on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. So that's Monsters Behind the Mask podcast. 
Um, he has, uh, I question his taste cause he thinks third floor wars is a better podcast and he, that can't be true. Cause I put out garbage. Um, uh, Coslato is giving me, uh, the business cause I keep saying fish boy. And he says the fish have, uh, the fish has a name, but, um, we'll call him tuna then. How does that sound? Um, all right. And let, what do we got there? Uh, JK Ray Carnival. It, it is fun, man. And I'll tell you, um, the models are just gorgeous. Um, but yeah, yeah he says it's kind of a hybrid of, uh, WWX weird uh and foe with some D D throw in. I like that. Yep. Um and then uh Gislato wants to know if Donald developed this TTS module. Um so Donald, what's the credits on this module? So for the most part, yes. Um like I said, all the official stuff, uh, which I didn't quite go over, but over to the sides, so people can see. Um, we do have a copy of the PDF rulebook, TT Combat, as part of their advent calendar in December, just released that. We also have uh, cheat sheets for all your actions um, that you can do and all the stats. Um, the standees, TT Combat was actually nice enough to get me copies of the actual full images that are used on the cards. Nice. So that I could build the standees. The cards are ripped out of the PDFs from the Gang Builder. All of the stats are on the Gang Builder. Um, and then the scripting for these little token counters, I borrowed from a life counter that somebody else made. Everything else, pretty much, I threw together. Obviously, the Carnivali is one of their wallpapers. Yeah, nice uh, nice work, man. So, nice, nice, nice work. So yeah. a couple things that need to happen is... We need to talk to Lewis um, or somebody over at TT Combat. Let's get yeah. um, let's get Donald the 3D renders um, just because one thing that's neat in TT Combat is you can um, bring in and import in those renders and actually have 3D models, which is really cool yeah. looking. Um, so that'd be kind of a neat thing if uh, somebody from TT Combat's watching. Let's uh, see if we can't make this even prettier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, know, I know Lewis is aware of this because he's actually ran at least one demo using this mod uh, Lewis, Lewis is good me. people I'm a big fan of yeah. Lewis um, he's been super kind to us um, Gaslato said uh, you mentioned earlier that Dead Aussie Gamer is working on a TTS module for Foe any chance we could get something like this for Foe uh, Dead Aussie are you still on watching because um, I know that you were demoing kind of an early thing and if you watch my um, if you watch me playing on Dead Aussie Gamer's channel I played uh, Through the Breach and you got to see him using Foe models um, on uh, TTS, um, and I think that's kind of an offshoot of what he's already doing. Um, uh, so the other thing Caslado mentions is uh, how easy it is to get 3D models in. I don't know how easy it is. I just know it can be done because uh, the Legion uh, mod for this to play Legion uses 3D models, and the MCP one, some of the models are 3D. Um, so I know it can be yeah. done. It's the big the the big thing would just be getting the bases when you build these standees. Um, the standees come the TTS itself is where these bases come from uh, but yeah I mean it would be no different than bringing in these bridges or these crates or any of that type of stuff It's you upload it to the cloud and then it gives you a URL that you put into tabletop so. gotcha cool so uh, uh, and I know that Doug Broman was watching I don't know if Doug is still on or not but uh, Doug why don't you just render up a whole bunch of uh, pretty terrain for Donald and uh because we know yeah. that you're an, an amazing sculptor. So, um, and if Dead Aussie oh, is on, oh, it is Doug. Gaslato is Doug. So Doug, come on, man. Okay. I've got nothing to do. I was gonna say, if Dead Aussie is on, or if not, feel free to tell him that if he has any questions about what I've done, what's any tips. Um, I've also, like I said, I've done some scripting. Um, Chris Vasira, I think his last name, just released a a drop fleet commander nice. mod, and so I helped him. They, they use some status markers on the basis, so I helped them work out the scripting for the status markers. So I'm happy to help out the community how I can with making these mods so that we can keep playing during COVID. Yeah, man. Donald, you're a good guy. Um, it's good hanging out yeah. with you. And for those of you that watched all the way to the end, take care.